Which so one? yeah, three, one, two, two, one. Three. Happy? Good synchronization. <laughs> Oli, thank you so much for your time. It's, a, it's an absolute pleasure to be here in Milan. Thanks thank for you. inviting us and to spend time with you is, is really special for us. Let's get stuck into Chelsea because that was a very interesting part of your story. Um, at the Champions League final last summer, we all remember it so vividly, um, you had had a great goal scoring record up to that point under the new manager, but then the final was a day of quite conflicting emotions for you. Uh, you describe yourself as flipping between joy and anger. And a quote that really stood out to me is that you had a grievous sense of injustice. Were you angry towards the, the coach, the situation? Well, that's more the last three months. Regarding the last three months, I uh, can tell you that um, the last time I've been in a starting eleven was the 15th of March, a cup game. And until uh, the Champions League final, I didn't start uh, only one game. Um, and well, at that time, I understand it will be my last uh, game uh, for the club. By the way, I felt so nostalgic uh, at Cobham for the last training uh, when we flew to uh, Porto for the final was uh, was a bit special for me. Uh, same as when I left Arsenal and obviously Montpellier before, but I was very nostalgic. But yeah, I had this this mix of feelings, you know, of uh, nostalgia, um, a bit of. Uh, sadness and I didn't understand why um, I couldn't uh, play a bigger part you know in, uh, in our in, in our success you know and even more because I was the top scorer of the Champions League uh, of our team you know so but I believe I believe I, I, I said I, I was a bit angry but I, I, I just didn't show it because the most important thing is um, the the team you know for keeping for to keep the, the the team cohesion and uh and obviously it was um, an amazing moment so i did i just kept kept it in my um in uh, for me but yeah it, it was frustrating it it was very very frustrating and um at the end of the day i was so happy to win that competition that i contribute so well to with the team uh, to win it but yeah it was it was the time for me to leave the club and uh, I spent three uh, years and a half amazing with trophies, with uh, the Cup, uh, Europa League and Champions League competitions in uh, which I, I, I score a lot of goals. So I was very happy, but the, the end was frustrating. When Thomas Tuchel took charge, he told you that you would be important to him as an experienced player. And then you end by not playing and angry. Do you have some bitterness towards him no 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 I uh, I don't have any um, um, what's the word resentment w yeah yeah I, I, I don't have a resentment uh, regarding the the manager even more because he's been successful and we've done we've done well uh, I just tried to play my part when he, he gave me the opportunity to play and uh, I, I think I, I I bring my uh, small comb to the big machine. Comb? That's our cog. Ah, the small cog to the big machine. And, um, and yeah, that's the most important. And uh, also, I believe that it's, it's very important to leave um, a good, um, good memories of yourself on, but also off the pitch. So that's why I didn't want to go uh, um, and fight with the, the manager. I stay at my place, uh, as always. But um, was tough time for me, but because of the the success of the Champions League and everything, um, um, I felt I felt very very good at the end. But yeah, uh, you are the most happiest when you're on a pitch, obviously. I'm really intrigued to understand why Thomas Tuchel has succeeded at Chelsea, where Frank Lampard did not succeed. What is your view? Well, uh, I'm still a player, not manager, so it will be tough for me to to explain really the reasons. But I would say maybe the experience of Thomas Tuchel uh, made made maybe the difference at the end of the day, and uh, the way he just adapt uh, to the team, and he play in a different shape. 
Um, we are the same players, so it, it's true that it's a bit um, difficult to say um, what happened. But I think uh, sometimes when a team um, is not in a good run, you know, you just need to, to change one thing to make it make it better and to, to start a new um, a new journey. Um, obviously, tactically, we've been working a lot on the tactic, you know, Thomas Tuchel wanted to play uh, a certain way, you know, and uh, his philosophy was uh, clear and uh, and we improved so much tactically. So uh, I believe uh, he brings us uh, this um, demanding uh, um, exigence, 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 like um, in, in our game and uh, well, we, we, we've been uh, solid, solid and, uh, and successful uh, until the end of the season. And, uh, but Frank Lampard uh, was, uh, was maybe, as he said, also maybe a bit, um, a, a bit young in his, in, in his um, I mean, not young, but it was a bit too early maybe in his, uh, in his manager career to take a club uh, like Chelsea. I, I don't know if it's true or not, but... Maybe you can explain uh, this by by that. Experience brings a lot of benefits to a definitely, coach. Definitely, definitely. When you say tactically, what made Thomas Tuchel improve Chelsea tactically? Well, we we uh, we played uh, in that three-four-three, three, very yeah. very offensive three-four-three uh, uh, three or three-four-one-two. Uh, I believe I really improved tactically with him and I told him uh, and he always tried to adapt to the team he will face um, and okay he's got his ideas but the main thing is you know exactly what you, you will have to do before facing uh, the opponent and uh, we um, I think yeah th this shape um, fit very fit so well was fitting so well to 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 our team that's why uh we had the players you know to play uh, these positions and we we've been so so strong and um and also we had the the quality but the quantity i mean when one player starting in the first um uh, playing in the starting 11 is is tired another one top player can replace him so that i think that's uh, the um, yeah, the way he changed things tactically a little bit, and obviously we are, we had so much talent in the team also. So, not many people have talked so much about Frank Lampard since he left because Thomas Tuchel did so well. He has taken all of the headlines. Lampard has kind of gone under the radar. I'd like to ask you about him. What was he like? You had your ups and downs in terms of you being in and out of the team. But do you rate him as a manager? Was he just that little bit behind that top level of, of Tuchel and Guardiola and Klopp? And can he get there or is it going to be a mm -hmm. slow path? Well, you asked me to rate Frank Lampard. Okay, now that's not an easy question. But obviously, uh, as you said, I had, uh, I, I had up and down with him. But I just kept uh, a good relationship with him in terms of... Uh, yeah, talking football and like with uh, honesty, and uh, um, I I send him a, a text. Also, uh, uh, we've been talking together after when he left the, the club, and I felt it was a bit harsh for for him also because he, he was not the he didn't have to take the entire uh, responsibility because our, us the players also felt. Not really good, but that's normal in every single changement, you know, you feel the, the same like that. But I think Frank's got this potential to become a top manager. But as I said before, he, he just needs to, to um, time and experience to, uh, to improve also his, himself as a, as a coach. And, uh, and uh, you, you cannot become a top uh, player or manager like that. You need time and you need uh, experience. And uh, I'm sure he, he can become a top, top manager. But obviously to compare with Guardiola, Tuchel, uh, Tuchel, or this kind of uh, uh, Zidane also, you know, this kind of manager, they didn't uh, 
uh, build themselves as great manager in uh, in six months or one year. But it's true that the last six months were not great with Frank, but the year before he's done a great job with less uh, um, less players, if I can say, uh, after the summer 2020, he could have buy, b bought some new players and we reinforced, uh, he reinforced the team. But with the young players we had, we did a great season and we just qualify uh, during that, that COVID uh, time, we just finished in the top four, which was uh, not uh, easy at the beginning of the season. So we had up and down uh, as uh, me also with him. But I, I, I would remember only one thing is that he gave me the opportunity, as he said in January when I wanted to leave, he gave me that opportunity to play and uh, to show him wrong. And um, I finished maybe with eight goals in nine or ten games and I crunched contribute uh, strongly to, to qualify for the Champions League and that, that, that's, that, that's what I will uh, remember about him. They talk about him now maybe being considered by Newcastle with Steve Bruce expected to leave as part of the takeover. Do you think that sort of club would be right for him or too soon? No, no, I think it would be a great opportunity, uh, even more with the new owners. Uh, Newcastle has always has been a, 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 a great club in Premier League. Obviously, not this last year's because, uh, but um, maybe 10, 15 years ago, they were they were top. And I loved uh, one player, um, especially uh, Alan Shearer, obviously. But so many great players play there. And uh, my friend um, Mathieu Debussy told me it was a great place to play football, and the fans are amazing. So yeah. Well, uh, he will need a, a good uh, and um, warm jacket uh, to face the winter there. But no, no, just um, joke apart. Uh, yeah, he will. Um, I think he can be successful there, and uh, it's a, it's a, it's a good club to improve and to maybe go for a bigger club when uh, he will feel ready. Alan Shearer is a columnist with The Athletic, so he'll be very happy to hear you say that. Um, listen, one player you played with at Chelsea, Timo Werner, has had a really difficult time. Do you think there is a top player in there, or do you think he's not quite right for Chelsea? No, I think, he is a great, I think he's a great striker, and uh, he played a huge part in our success last year. Um, people, uh, The problem is people look too much on the statistics when yeah. you're a striker, obviously. And um, and if you are not scoring enough goals, they will always um, make comments about your games or stuff like that. So, yeah, I, I know he, he didn't score so many goals, but in um, one more time, in, a, in, the philo in the Tuchel philosophy of game, he was huge, he was so important because mm. he was... Uh, running all day long, doing that runs, you know, and um, and yeah, yeah, he, he was very, very um, um, complimentary with uh, Kai, uh, Havertz. Kai Havertz at front and Mason Mount. These three uh, who played the Champions League final, uh, they were honestly very complimentary. So I think in, 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 the, in our team last year it was, it was uh, very important. But the problem is in that kind of Big clubs, you have uh, you have to score goals, more goals. That's why I think they sign uh, Romelu uh, Lukaku. Well, the uh, another victim of that has been Tammy Abraham, who in yeah. the book you talk about was the favourite of Frank Lampard. He kept you out of the mm. team. You speak very nicely of him. He scored a lot yeah. of goals. Now both of you are in Italy. Yeah. He's doing well. He's <laughs> broken back into the England squad as well. Yeah, I'm happy for him that uh, he had this opportunity to bounce back in a foreign uh, country, which is not easy for English to leave Premier League. Uh, I'm happy for him. It can be a great experience for him uh, to keep improving. Uh, but it's true that he needed game time. And uh, at the end, at Chelsea was too tough for him. He was not even in the squad. And so, yeah, he took the right decision. And um, he's got a great potential, you know. And uh, I think he can go. He can go very high if he is working well. And Chelsea uh, are proven winners. You've won many trophies there, and they take 
a different path to your previous club, Arsenal. Um, what did Chelsea do right that Arsenal do not do right, in your view? Which, which model do you think is better? Well, uh, as I said, at Chelsea, when you are not scoring enough goals as a striker, they might, uh, year after, pick up another <laughs> striker to replace yeah. you. Uh, I mean, I could say maybe uh, in a club like Chelsea, um, you have less time to uh, show your qualities than at Arsenal. Mm. That's the main difference. And uh, also, obviously, the 10 past years uh, shows that uh, Chelsea uh, has uh, won more trophies. Um, so, but with maybe more... Um, more uh, investments, uh, they spend much more money than Arsenal. And yeah, the philosoph philosophy is, is different. Um, I mean, I loved uh, playing at Arsenal with uh, Arsene Wenger. Uh, was my childhood dream, you know, and um, I would never thank him uh, enough, you know, uh, to give me this opportunity. And I love my time there, but it's true that it was so hard to fight for the title. Only one year when Leicester won the league, we could have done it but yeah that's uh, that's one that's one of my small re re main regret if i can say it not to fight for the the title uh, also with, with them because um we face strong teams like liverpool city chelsea united and it was always the, the target was for us basically to qualify to finish in the top four to fight for the title race was so it's too difficult. But is there something different in the mentality that makes Chelsea so successful other than just the spending and the shorter time that you've got there that Arsenal could learn from or, or not? No, but I think uh, obviously the, the money is, is huge. Is huge. Yeah. And uh, when you can buy a striker uh, one year after having won the Champions League, uh, you can buy a striker at 70 or 80 million pounds. Well, uh, it shows that um, money is huge, but also there, there, there might be, uh, yeah, there, yeah, there might be something um, that uh, make uh, Chelsea win more trophy than Arsenal, maybe the we are more demanding at Chelsea because uh, you have to fight for the title, you know, from the start of the season. If you are not uh, like uh, Frank, uh, we were maybe ninth when uh, he's been sacked. So um, basically, uh, maybe at Ars if it was at Arsenal, they would have left him li li more time, you know, to come back. And But Chelsea never happened and that's why um, you have to be uh, good uh, sooner, like uh, uh, when you can at Chelsea. Well, they've given Mikel Arteta time at Arsenal. He's a former teammate of mm -hmm. yours. Mm -hmm. Do you think he's the right man to lift Arsenal up or, or not? They are so far below mm -hmm. the expectations of the club and the club that you grew up mm -hmm. seeing win multiple big trophies. Well, one thing is sure is uh, that he, he's got the time to uh, to improve and to 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 install his uh, ideas. But uh, well, um, it's true that uh, it it hurts sometimes to see Arsenal at that position because uh, yeah, when I was there, uh, we were not fighting for the title race, but at least we were close to the top four and. Um, Yes, uh, I think he, he, he's, a, he's a good manager, but maybe he needs, uh, he needs more support. So I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm not, go not going to give the, the, the solution because I'm, I'm just a, a player. But uh, regarding um, managing, and I think, uh, yeah, I heard good things about him. Uh, the problem is you 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 need uh, you need uh, you you need time, but you need also money. That's as we said, it's huge uh, part of uh, success.